For a month now, people in Iran have been protesting against the regime after a young woman died in police custody. Over the weekend, a large fire erupted inside a prison facility in Tehran known for jailing political prisoners. At least eight people are believed to be dead. Amna Nawaz has more. The protest movement sweeping Iran after the death of Masa Amini spread to the notorious Evin prison in Tehran. On Saturday, videos spread on social media of the prison ablaze. Flames and smoke rising from parts of the compound. Gunshots can be heard in some clips. Tehran's governor later blamed a prisoner riot. Activists said prisoners were chanting anti-regime slogans and guards launched a crackdown. Later that evening, protesters outside were seen marching to the prison, chanting death to the dictator. American citizen Emad Shargi is currently detained inside Evan Prison. His sister, Neda Shargi, who's been campaigning for his release, joins us tonight. Neda, welcome. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. So I want to ask you about your brother's detention. He's been held there for four years now in a moment, but I want to begin with this weekend. Mm -hmm. As the fires were burning, as the riots were unfolding, your brother was inside and he called you. What did he tell you? What did you hear? Um, he, I was actually in, in D.C. at a, an event for hostages who had come home, so I thought he was calling at that time to see how the event went. But when he called, it was quite loud in the background, and um, Emad just said, you know, hi, um, I want you to know that I'm okay. And I said, what's going on? What's all the noises what, in the background? And he said, it's just very um, chaotic here. And that's all he said. His voice was incredibly, um, you know, heavy. And he said, we're just staying in our room. Um, and I said, OK. And he said, you know, tell everyone I love them. And I hope to talk to you soon. But um, it really wasn't what Emad said. It was more what I could hear in the background. It sounded like he was in the middle of a riot. I could hear people shouting. And I could hear what I now know are gunshots, um, because I only found out later that there had been riots in that part of the prison where he, where he is. What was it like for you in that moment, when you're seeing these videos, the fires burning, hearing the gunshots, knowing your brother's inside? You know, I try to be a very optimistic person, but um, I, I was, I thought to myself that could be the last time I, I hear from him. I imagined him, you know, in a smoke-filled room, unable to get out. All the worst possible thoughts came to my head, and then I had the responsibility of knowing that I was the last person who spoke to him. So um, it was terrifying. Your brother has been there since 2018, mm -hmm. wrongfully detained. He is an American citizen. He was convicted in a sham trial on some national security charges. What can you tell us about the negotiations to bring him back home? What do U.S. officials tell you? We just hear that they're trying to do their best to get them out, but Emma should have been out last year. Emma should have been out six months ago. Emma should have been out three months ago, and he's still there. I think what we learned this weekend is that, that time is an illusion. At any moment, something could happen to him, and he could die. He did survive, we should say. You were able to confirm he is OK. But what can you tell us about how he is doing? He called, finally, yesterday morning, and um, it was a minute-long call. He just said, I'm alive, and I'm fine. Don't worry. I didn't ask him anything, and he didn't offer any more details. You know, the calls are usually short and monitored. Um, his voice was hoarse, um, and he was coughing, and I am putting two and two together, thinking that he's probably inhaled a lot of the smoke from the fires, because the fires are in the, near the ward where he, where he is kept. And he said that they moved him late at night to uh, Section 2A of Evin Prison, away from the fire. Have you or anyone in your family been able to meet with President Biden or speak to him directly about this. We have seen the Biden administration have some success mm -hmm. bringing home Americans who are wrongfully detained, mm -hmm. most recently from Venezuela, but also Bakr Namazi was released from uh, medical treatment from Iran. Yes. Have you spoken with them directly? Well, I have not spoken. We have not spoken to President Biden. We have made several requests to speak with him because I think um, it's important to talk about the case and, and what we understand and our frustrations and the need for urgency. I think it's very important for the president to know. Um, we keep requesting, and we hope to hear from him and have the opportunity to meet with him. Do you believe they're doing everything they can to bring him home? I believe they don't quite understand when we say to them, you need to do this quickly. I believe they think that time is on our side and that they can just wait. So I, I, 
I don't believe they understand how urgent it is to get them home. This moment in time in Iran, we're seeing historic protests across the country, right? You're also, the nuclear talks are playing out between Iran and the U.S. Are you worried all of this impacts your brother's future? Of course I am. Um, it's hard enough to, to get attention for this humanitarian issue around our, our innocent American hostages, and it's even tougher now to, to get our voices heard and to urge action on this very quickly. Neda Shargi, sister of wrongfully detained American citizen Emma Shargi, who's held in Iran. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me.